Assalamu alaikum, I'm Dr. Tamkeen presenting you the lecture for week 11 that is from applications of health psychology and our topic today is coronary heart disease. Cardiovascular system which consists of heart, arteries and veins. The heart is a muscle that, by contracting and relaxing, pumps blood throughout the body. Heart is essentially the center of rapid transit system that carries oxygen to body cells and removes carbon dioxide and other waste from the cells. Uh, when an individual is healthy, the cardiovascular, respiratory and digestive system are all integrated with each other. The digestive system produces nutrients. The respiratory system furnishes oxygen, both of which are, uh, or both of which circulate through the blood to various parts of the body. In addition, the endocrine system affects the cardiovascular system by stimulating or depressing the rate of cardiovascular activity. So, uh, with this cardiovascular system, other systems of the body are also interlinked and or we can say this cardiovascular system, its activities may also have an influence on the other systems of the body. There are many types of heart diseases that affect different parts of the organ, that is heart, and they occur in different ways. Uh, we can name a few which include congenital heart disease, arrhythmia, coronary heart disease, dilated cardiomyopathy, uh, myocardial infarction. You, have, you would have heard often about heart failure and many others. However, the one of the most common one is called coronary artery disease or coronary arteries um, are main uh, part of the organ in which um, the problem lies and we will be focusing today's lecture regarding the coronary art disease. So firstly we'll discuss regarding that what are the coronary arteries. These are the arteries that supply blood to the heart muscle the, that is the myocardium. The two principal coronary arteries branch off from the aorta, the main artery that carries oxygenated blood from heart. Left and right coronary arteries divide into smaller branches providing the blood supply to the myocardium. So whenever there is a damage to the coronary arteries, it brings upon coronary heart disease. Actually, with every beat of the heart, the heart makes a slight twisting motion which actually moves these coronary arteries. And due to which, uh, due to this movement, these uh, coronary arteries uh, experience a lot of strain. So it can be said that when these move, they bring upon an injury to the coronary arteries. However, as the body has um, healing powers, the damage is healed in two different ways. Preferably, the route involves the formation of small amounts of scar tissue and result in no serious problem. The second route involves the formation of atheromatous plaques, deposit composed of cholesterol and other lipids or fats, connective tissue and muscle tissue. The plaques which are deposited, they actually grow and classify into hard bony substance that starts thickening the artery um, or you can say the walls of the artery. This process involves inflammation and thus it results in occlusion of the arteries that is called atherosclerosis. A different but related uh, problem is arteriosclerosis or the loss of elasticity of the arteries. The beating of the heart pushes blood through the arteries with great force and arterial elasticity allows adaptation to this pressure. 
loss of elasticity tends to make uh, the cardiovascular system less capable of tolerating increase in cardiac blood volume. And as all this is happening, there is a great uh, danger present, which uh, may lead to uh, arterial plaques and hardening of the arteries. And due to all these changes in the cardiovascular system, the coronary arteries are affected and the um, supply of oxygen to the heart, it gets more and more threatened. And then uh, if immediate treatment is not provided or timely treatment is not provided, then eventually it can uh, prolong the illness as well as it may lead to um, death of a person. Myocardium cannot survive without oxygen. Uh, myocardial infarction is the term used for uh, heart attack. In comparison to myocardial infarction, a less serious result of restriction of blood supply to myocardium is angina pectoris. It's a disorder uh, in which the symptoms are that a person uh, experiences a crushing pain in the chest and the person finds difficulty in breathing because there is restriction of oxygen and there is the reserve capacity of the cardiovascular system the heart becomes uh, under um, danger and uh, the individual may experience the heart disease the uncomfortable symptoms of angina really last more than a few minutes, but angina is a sign of obstruction in the coronary heart diseases. Arteries. Over the period of time, there have been changes in the rates of cardiovascular disease. There are a number of risk factors um, present for cardiovascular disease, which may be classified as inherent risk factors, behavioral risk factors, and psychosocial risk. Firstly, we will address the inherent risk factors. Inherent risk factors are the one which are uh, related with the genetic or physical conditions of the individual and which may not be readily um, modified. So we need to identify high-risk individuals that uh, who may be vulnerable for development of cardiovascular disease so that we can minimize the potential. However, uh, those people who are at risk are those uh, who have uh, hypertension, who are indulging in the behavior of uh, smoking, and who have poor dietary habits. The risk factors which we may uh, tap related to inherent risk factors are advancing age. As the person um, comes off in age, there are more and more chances that the individual may um, develop cardiovascular disease. And that is also interlinked with what kind of diet the individual has been taking, what other behaviors like smoking behaviors was there or not, whether the individual has been uh, taking a lot, of, a lot of stress because stress is also very much interlinked with um, cardiovascular diseases. So as the age grows, the individual keeps on experiencing these things. So there are chances that the individual may develop cardiovascular disease. Diabetes, uh, there is problem in glucose um, metab metabolism due to which there are chances that the individual may experience cardiovascular disease. Family history, uh, it is commonly said among the people that uh, cardiovascular diseases run in our family or uh, after a specific age of uh, 40 or 50, there are um, heart related uh, problems or illnesses reported in the family. Gender, it is said that uh, men die more in comparison to females from cardiovascular diseases and men tend to develop um, cardiovascular diseases in middle ages. However, uh, it is said that female in comparison to men die uh, less from cardiovascular diseases. And we are finding that uh, female uh, across all ages may develop um, 
uh, cardiovascular diseases but men are always uh, double in number in comparison to female older women uh, they tend to experience more cardiovascular diseases probably because uh, the life uh, expectancy is more among women so at the uh, older age they develop more uh, cardiovascular diseases another factor is cholesterol level so because of the reason that the cholesterol level is high and there are chances that it may block the coronary heart um, coronary arteries so that is a very um, significant or uh, vital risk factors that um, can bring upon cardiovascular disease in an behavioral risk factors like uh, smoking specifically uh, a person becomes smoker after the age of 35 it is said that a person becomes established smoker after the age of 35 years however there are many who experience passive smoking then there can be um, tobacco present in the environment and uh, all these people who have uh, experiences of passive smoking or environmental tobacco they have 15 percent increased uh, risk for developing cardiovascular disease similarly another risk factor is diet what food choices are taken by the individual those people who take uh, very high sodium intake they tend to uh, develop hypertension at uh, an early uh, stage you can say or you can say they have more vulnerability of developing hypertension which eventually uh, is considered to be a precipitating uh, factor for development of cardiovascular disease however if people take potassium uh, it may reduce risk of uh, developing uh, cardiovascular disease or you can say that potassium may serve as a protector Similarly, those who take uh, red meat too often have uh, a lot of food, uh, buttery food, or who take whole milk, they have uh, the possibility of developing cardiovascular diseases because of the reason that these things are responsible for uh, uh, blocking the coronary arteries. However, if the people are taking fish and they are uh, taking good food and good diet so they may serve as protection against the heart diseases and stroke specifically those who take omega-3 they may uh, protect themselves from development of this similarly physical activity uh, lower the risk of cardiovascular disease however the sedentary lifestyle it increases the possibility of developing cardiovascular disease psychosocial which include education and income. Uh, education is much more likely um, to over uh, connected with the overweight. Uh, those who are having low education and low income level, they are likely to have uh, over, overweight um, hypertension. They have less access to healthcare. Uh, however, it has been observed that there is more longevity in the high income groups because probably they are more concerned regarding their health and they are more uh, concerned regarding their fitness. So their lifestyle is different in comparison to the people uh, having low income and low education level. Social support, uh, because when a person experiences stress or a stressor, they are provided with the social support so they just get a buffer for their stressors. Similarly, the negative emotions, negative emotions like experiences of stress, anxiety, and depression, this may make uh, an individual prone to development of cardiovascular diseases. The process of cardiac rehabilitation may involve psychologists who help cardiac patients adjust their lifestyle to minimize risk factors and lessen the chances of uh, the future attacks because heart disease is the most frequent cause of death across the world. 
reducing the cardiovascular diseases uh, we can focus on prevention if a person uh, stops smoking or avoid smoking um, have lesser or maintain the cholesterol level uh, control their bp do not take stress improve their dietary changes uh, involve in uh, physical activities have good social support and enjoy or manage healthy emotion re regulation and learn stress management that may reduce the cardiovascular